Good evening. You're watching the main news on HKIBC. I'm Chloe Fo. Our top stories tonight. Hong Kong's teachers must uphold national security and support patriotic education under new government guidelines. 36 Hong Kong deputies to the National People's Congress elected, but no word yet on the new leader. And major Hong Kong banks pushed their prime rate to a near 15-year high after another 50 basis point increase. Hong Kong's teachers must uphold the rule of law, promote national education, and be mindful of their social media footprint under a new set of guidelines regulating their conduct. Those who fail to adhere to the principles may be reprimanded or even deregistered, Katrina Lau reports. Published in 1990, the Code for the Education Profession of Hong Kong provides detailed guidelines for teachers to uphold their profession. But the government said times have changed and there was a need to update the document. After months of work, the revamped version was finally published. Now called the Guidelines on Teachers' Professional Conduct, the protocol expanded from 12 pages to 30 and is written in Chinese only. It specifies eight guiding principles for teachers, each coming with a to-do and not-to-do list. There was a particular focus on respecting the rule of law. It says teachers are obliged to have a proper understanding of the Constitution and the basic law. They should also uphold national security, social order, and public interest, and actively support and promote national education. On the other hand, they must not organize or take part in illegal activities or incite students to participate in acts which disrupt public order. Another principle, lead by example, specifies that teachers must exercise caution when using social media and own up to posts they publish or forward. Complaints on misconduct will be handled by a task force led by directorate-level officials. Serious breaches could lead to their licenses being suspended for a period of time or even permanently. Other lesser violations would result in verbal warnings or advisory letters. Teachers have the right to appeal within 14 days of the decision. Eleven case studies were also included to illustrate the types of offenses. One of them was a secondary teacher who used biased and negative materials in a liberal studies class. The Bureau said this deeply distorted the values of students and deregistered the teacher. Katrina Lau, HKIBC. The election for the SER's deputies to the National People's Congress was concluded in less than two hours this morning. The result was submitted to the NPC's Candidate Eligibility Review Committee for further scrutiny. Janice Lowe reports. Chief Executive John Lee chaired the election for SER's deputies to National People's Congress this morning. In less than two hours, 36 deputies were elected. Of the more than 1,400 eligible voters, only 1,273 cast their ballots. Six ballots were invalid. With 1,254 votes, Nancy Ip, who is the president of the Hong Kong University of Science and Technology, was declared the queen of votes. The neuroscientists managed to secure a second term with overwhelming support from the election committee, with just 13 votes not going her way. Lawmaker Kenneth Falk, who contested for the first time, was crowned king of votes by capturing 1,248 ballots. Out of 42 candidates, all 15 current deputies managed to retain their seats. They include President of the Federation of Trade Unions, Stanley Ng, Legislator Ma Fung Kwok, as well as lawmaker and solicitor Maggie Chan, politician Rock Chan, and DAB chairwoman Starry Lee transitioned from the Chinese People's Political Consultative Conference to the Congress. 
When asked if she will be the successor of Tam Yu Chong, the city's sole standing committee member, the lawmaker responded that no one has reached out to her so far. But Li believes Beijing has its own considerations, and her preference would not matter. Councillor Priscilla Leung, Jimmy Ng from the Chinese Manufacturers Association, and former Transport and Housing Minister Frank Chen were three of the 21 new faces. The six who missed out include Andrew Fan, son of the former standing committee member Rita Fan, and Zhe Oi Hong from the FTU. Except one who did not pass the one-third threshold of the ballots received, they will now become backup candidates and fill potential vacancies in the future. The 36 deputies will now undergo another round of screening from Beijing before beginning their five-year term next year. Janice Lowe, HKIBC. The Consumer Council has warned people who wish to paint their nails to carefully study the ingredients of the polishes first. That's after the watchdog found that seven in ten products it tested contained carcinogens already banned in Europe. And customs are now following up. Joanna Ho reports. Many people attach great importance to beauty, but sometimes the price they pay extends beyond monetary terms. With so-called gel nail polishes becoming popular, the Consumer Council tested 25 products on the market and made a shocking recovery. 17 were detected with one or more harmful substances banned by the European Union because they are deemed carcinogenic. Naphthalene, which the watchdog regarded as one of the most dangerous contaminants, was found in 13 samples. These three models contained formaldehyde, an ingredient that can harden the nails for easier manicure work but could cause allergic skin reactions and increase the risk of miscarriage for pregnant women. As such, the EU has already banned formaldehyde in cosmetic products since 2019. Meanwhile, all samples were tested with the toxic substance toluene, although they were all within levels permitted by the EU. But the council warned the chemical could irritate users' eyes and respiratory tract and even damage the liver and the nervous system for prolonged exposure. As a general rule, it urged consumers to stop using the products if they experience discomfort and let their nails recover every two to three months by not painting anything. On a side note, the watchdog realized eight models did not specify their ingredients, while 18 lacked usage instructions. Right now, we don't have any specific regulations about uh, product labeling um, in uh, cosmetic uh, items. And if necessary, probably, you know, uh, we have to assess, you know, whether certain regulations you know, should be imposed about uh, the product labeling. But as a responsible trader, uh, you should present as many information as possible for the consumers to make an informed choice. Customs are now following up on the council's test results. Joanna Ho, HKIBC. Six Chinese officials who were involved in scuffles at Beijing's outpost in Manchester have been put on a flight home. The British government expressed a disappointment that they will not face justice, prompting Beijing to hit back. Azam Khan reports. What was initially an ordinary demonstration outside the Chinese consulate in Manchester escalated into a diplomatic row. The British government stepped in after a protester from Hong Kong was allegedly dragged inside the compound and scuffled with consulate staff. Among the crowd was Zheng Shiyuan, the consul general who later admitted taking part in the altercation but insisted he did so to defend China's dignity. Zheng took issue with the banners and signs outside the consulate which he said were abusive and disrespectful to China. Britain had since asked Beijing to waive diplomatic immunity for six Chinese officials so they could be questioned. Instead, the diplomats, including Zheng, has been put on a flight home ahead of a deadline to comply. In response to our request, uh, the Chinese uh, government have now removed from the UK uh, those uh, officials, including the Consul General uh, himself. This demonstrates that our adherence to the rule of law, the seriousness with which we take these incidents has had an effect and um, we will continue on the world stage and domestically to abide by the rule of law. But Foreign Ministry spokesman Wang Wenbin presented a different version of the events today. 
He called it part of a normal personnel rotation to bring Jiang back to home soil. Wang also slammed protesters for seriously endangering the safety of the Consul General and that British authorities failed to fulfill its obligations under international law. Azam Khan, HKIBC. The World Health Organization said it hoped the COVID pandemic will no longer be considered a public health emergency next year. The WHO made the declaration in January 2020, when the outbreak was first reported in the central mainland city of Wuhan. A declaration triggers a coordinated global response and boosts funding on research. But nearly three years later, the global weekly death toll is now around a fifth of what it was a year ago. Nearly 650 million infections and more than 6.6 million deaths have been reported to the WHO, but the agency admits the figures are a vast undercount. Hong Kong's major banks have raised their prime rate by 25 basis points, pushing it to the highest level in over 14 years. This came as the Monetary Authority raised its base rate for the seventh time following an overnight rate hike by the U.S. Federal Reserve. There's more bad news for home buyers after major banks in the city raised their prime rate. HSBC was the first among the commercial lenders to announce a 25 basis point increase, pushing its prime lending rate to 5.625 percent, effective tomorrow, marking the highest level in 14 years. Standard Chartered and Bank of China Hong Kong followed suit, raising their prime rate also by 25 basis points, taking effect next Monday. All three banks increased their local currency deposit rate by the same amount as well, to 0.625%. The hike came after the Hong Kong Monetary Authority followed the U.S. Federal Reserve, which raised its target rate by 50 basis points overnight. The current U.S. hike seems less brutal when compared with previous 75 basis point jumps. With the increase, the Monetary Authority's base rate now stands at 4.75 percent, close to the 5 percent record last seen in January 2008. Chief Executive Eddie Yue reiterated that the rate hikes will not affect the city's financial and monetary stability, but warned that banks' lending rates might further go up. The public should carefully assess and manage the relevant risk when making property purchase, taking out mortgage, or making other borrowing decisions. Yue added that authorities are closely monitoring the rate change as well as the property market situation to see if any adjustments on stress tests are required and launch countermeasures accordingly. Now let's take a look at the market. The Hang Seng Index closed down 304 points. Top 10 active stocks, Tencent down $7.40, Alibaba down $3.60, Meituan down $6. AIA up $0.55, cents. Wuxibayo down $2.15. Fox trading against Hong Kong dollar, the euro is at 8.25, British pound at 9.57, Australian dollar at 5.25. Moving on to the UK market, the London FTSE is currently down 31 points. On to the weather now. Cloudy to overcast with some rain patches tomorrow. Temperatures will range between 14 and 18 degrees, dipping to 10 degrees on Saturday and 9 on Sunday. Now let's take a look at the weather around the world. That's our main news for Thursday night. Join us for more news at 11. I'm Chloe Fong. Thanks for watching. Good night.